What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. However, it was possible to seed a labyrinth with monsters for adventurers to test their skill against. Fill a maze with magicules and monsters would spring to life from them. Adjusting the labyrinth's magicule density made it easy to predict the strength of the monsters who resulted, as well as restrict monsters to a certain floor or floors. That made it possible to fine-tune a labyrinth's difficulty level with some precision. Rimuru had an idea of how this magicule infusion process worked, so he'd give that some thought once he had the right container for it. Regarding question 4, the sheer power of Ramirez's mazecraft skill meant she could change the entire structure of a floor in about an hour, although floors could not be edited for 24 hours after the last revamping. There were conditions, of course. She couldn't make something, plants or other organic matter, for example, out of nothing, so structural changes would chiefly result in staid-looking mazes of blank walls. However, if you simply wanted to redecorate a floor with some materials at hand instead of changing its structure, that wasn't too terribly difficult. It was also simple enough, by the way, to rearrange a labyrinth's floor order. This, too, was set in stone for 24 hours afterward, but that made it no less useful a tool. And last but not least, question 5. Astonishingly, this depended entirely on Ramirez. If she was keeping tabs on things, she could snap her fingers and resurrect the dead inside her labyrinth. Rimuru was just wondering how she handled the corpses of monsters and hapless adventurers, but this sounded like nothing short of voodoo to him. Apparently, she wasn't sure what happened to monsters born inside the labyrinth, since she had no examples to work with yet, but she had already resurrected quite a few adventurers in the past. This was why Ramirez emphasized not being able to move organic creatures inside, without permission, earlier. This permission was nothing too formal. What mattered was that the subject in question knew he or she was going into the labyrinth. Without that understanding, any visitors would be refused entry. In other words, when Rimuru went into Ramirez's labyrinth a while back, that was because he actively tried to do so. If Rimuru was carrying a sleeping companion on his back as he ventured inside, they would have been blown back at the entrance. One exception to this was infants. Children young enough to not have their own free will yet were essentially treated as things by this rule. You could drag someone kicking and screaming into a labyrinth, but only at a great burden to Ramirez, so it was impossible if she resisted you at all. You wouldn't want to try it, is how she put it to Rimuru. So there you have it. Essentially, anyone who goes into a labyrinth was under the tyrannical rule of Ramirez, something they agreed to the moment they stepped through the entrance. If they accepted the rules, Ramirez would keep careful tabs on their status. And you know how much we like playing pranks, don't you? Ramirez said, puffing out her chest. I just like surprising people and seeing their reactions. If they died, you know, that'd kind of weigh on my conscience. So I do what I can to keep them alive and set them back on their way. Sometimes, there'd be an unlucky subject who really did die on Ramirez, but it sounded like those deaths occurred outside of her labyrinth. At the very least, she didn't want to kill Rimuru when he was in there. That golem who looked ready to stomp Rimuru to oblivion was only there because she knew she could fix him up, good as new, if called to. That made sense to Rimuru, although it seemed to lower the stakes of what he went through quite a bit. So if a band of adventurers goes in on a monster hacking run, you can revive them if they die? Yep. Once they're booted out of the labyrinth, I can resurrect them like nothing happened. It's a bit tougher if we're talking a whole party at once, though, so we might need to send them in with some of my revival equipment. Equip a specified item from her mazecraft labyrinth, and dying would just transport you back outside intact. That solved Rimuru's safety concerns, which was really the biggest problem. Excellent. That's wonderful, Ramirez. Really? You mean it? I'm really that great, aren't I? You sure are. Our ambitions are as good as accomplished. They are? Yeah, they are. I was just thinking that myself. They looked at each other and nodded. I'll be counting on you, Ramirez. And I'll hold up my end of the bargain. It'll be nothing but smooth sailing ahead. Smooth sailing, huh? Hopefully the boat isn't made out of mud. We couldn't shake on the deal, given our size difference, but I think our minds were linked up well enough anyway. Accepting Ramirez's offer, they decided to build the battle arena in the empty space on the southeast side of town, a dungeon spread out beneath it. Their theater, meanwhile, would be put up on the northwest side, near where all their high-end spa facilities were. 
They had actually put up a gym, a museum, and so forth among all the luxury lodging over there, so all they really had to do was refurbish a previously built structure for the purpose. So the dungeon and theater were in place, but they still had no arena. Geld wasn't around, but Rimuru sure he could rely on Gobku and his crew. With them, they would doubtlessly have something in place by the Founders Festival. I'm not sure we can do this, Sir Rimuru. Oh, no? Yeah, guess not. I mean, any normal project like this would require several years of work. Asking for a finished arena in a month or so was kind of insane. Even with monster-level muscle on their side, Rimuru wasn't so sure they could do it, either. Yeah, alright, let me lend a hand, then. I'll help move dirt around and process the metal infrastructure. Rimuru may not look it, but he did used to work for a general contractor. He didn't have that much on the field construction experience, but with what Rimuru learned imitating the veterans, he wasn't a total amateur. Besides, he had Raphael. Me too, let me help. In that case, allow me to help, too. As you wish, Lady Ramirez. I suppose that meant I had the support of Ramirez and Beretta and Trainee, too. Let's get right to work. Rimuru opened up his blueprints among the tents that lined the area. Hmm, alright, I don't see a problem with this. Great. Better explain things to your beastmen, then. A lot of their nation's beastmen were out working on remote projects, so Rimuru decided to give all this and Sufia the full explanation for now. They would meet together this evening. If that is what you seek, Sir Rimuru, it shall be done. It sure will. We've got no right to complain. Once Rimuru explained his whole plan to them, they accepted with surprising speed. They also stated that Rimuru wouldn't need to explain it again to the other beastmen. Um, really? Sure, Sir Rimuru. Sufia said. You've given us all food to eat and a place to stay. We'd all be glad to help out with building this arena or whatever. Besides. All this added. I hear that Sir Carillon will be involved in the festival you're holding. We all would be delighted to help you out. I am a tad under the weather, so I will leave the rest to you, Sufia. You got it. So Sufia would lead the beastmen on this job, and once that was decided, things proceeded at blazing speed. One order from Sufia was all it took to get the beastmen out of their tents. As they all lined up in formation, Ramirez nimbly transported all the tents into her labyrinth. They now had a large patch of empty land to work with. Still a little wowed by this feat, Rimuru used Belzebuth, Lord of Gluttony, to consume parts of the lot he didn't need and pare it down to a square, flat expanse. The steel framing came up soon after, and once it did, Gobku and his crew stacked up pre-processed stones to fill in the walls. Within the day, they had walls so hardy that not a single hole could be found in any of them. This gave them a sturdy-looking underground space with a large door in the front of it. For someone from Rimuru's modern era, the whole thing was wrapped up with unbelievable speed. Wow. Ramirez gushed. My new castle. Oh, right. If you touch this door, it'll take you to the labyrinth floor where the tents are. They all took a trip inside. There, they saw the beastmen's living space, exactly as it looked up on the surface. Alvis and Sufia couldn't hide their astonishment, especially since the air was kept refreshingly cool down here. Do we even need these tents now, I wonder? I dunno, yeah, I assume it doesn't rain in here, so I bet we could just sleep on the ground. They didn't seem at all dissatisfied with this. Rimuru could see them and the other beastmen experiment with going back and forth between the real and labyrinth dimensions. All it took was a moment's thought for them. So does it get dark in here at night? Sure does. Replied Ramirez. We're linked to the outside from here, so I can even make it rain if you like. Man, she could do just about anything. But it wasn't like they were farming crops in here, so I just asked her to set up a normal day-night cycle for me. This whole space seemed a lot more useful than I guessed at first. I bet I could adapt it to other needs, too. We'd have to brainstorm some ideas. Apparently reassured, the beastmen went off to help with the outside work. They'd pitch in with the arena, evidently, under the command of Gobku. A lot of them were women and children, but that's beastmen for you, they all wanted to work, and each one was stronger than a human, at least. Gobku was giving them the basic manual labor jobs, it looked like, but better trained beastmen were on site as well now, aiding in construction. Trainee was supplying logs for the building, don't ask me how she got them, while Beretta's precision carpentry turned them into usable boards. Beretta could even cast a spell to dry the wood, which slashed the time involved dramatically. I thought I had abandoned my common sense long ago in this world, 
But it was sights like these that occasionally made me think wow, I really am in a whole different world, huh? If this keeps up, they truly could make it in time for the Founders Festival. Rimuru had spit out the land he ate earlier to create a small mountain, too, so perhaps they could use that as a field feature in the arena. It should work great. Leave the rest to us, Sir Rimuru, said Gobkyu. Rimuru nodded, full of excitement over the arena's imminent completion. With the main construction now in full swing, Ramirez had been left to her own devices. She needed a job, if only so she wouldn't start pestering everyone else. And what was she good at? Why, expanding the labyrinth, of course. Better use her while I got her. I gotta say, Ramirez, your mazecraft skill amazes me. She had transported everything within a pretty broad stretch of land in the blink of an eye. Rimuru didn't want to compliment her too much, but he had to hand it to her here. The labyrinth itself was pretty amazing, too. Ah, it's nothing. But right now, though, it's only this room, the deepest depths where my spirit friends live, and a connecting corridor. I'll have more levels for you tomorrow. It took one hour to build a level, right? Building a vast underground labyrinth that went down a hundred floors would be a pretty tall order even on modern-day Earth. Building up, after all, is a hell of a lot easier. Ramirez's skill, though, made that possible, and suddenly, some pretty fantastic dreams seemed within reach. Okay, let's go with your limit, then. One hundred floors. Huh? Do you need that many? Yep. I want to fill it up with traps, and I want enough space to gradually up the monster challenge level as you go down. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to King Bolate, Michael, Rival Sakilin, Chu Gaming, Autistic Lemur 420, Delquin Albury, Hashira of Nothing, Swarup Sagar, Zero Four Sarang, Jake Rum, Wilfred Miller, Vince Hernandez, Karasaf Exonar, Erwan X, Skydunky951, and last but not the least, shout out to all the great. I'll see you guys in the next video.